Okay, in this tutorial, we'll take a look at cloth effects some more because they're a lot of fun. And uh, let's see. So I have this is a plane just set up as a cloth object, just a flat plane. We'll take a look at that. Go into edit mode, and you can see I have I had these this top row selected, and then I went into the vertex group, and I had set those, and those all actually have a weight of just like this 1.0, like that, and I assigned them like that. Then I selected the inverse of those right in here and I assigned those to a weight of 0.1 and assigned it as well so they have different values on them. At 1.0 they're fixed in place can't move and these can move down here as far as being a cloth and then I also had to go into the physics tab up here and I've done tutorials on this before so I'm just doing this as a review this portion of it and I set a cloth object like this and I set a collision object for it and then for the sphere in the scene Notice I have a couple keyframes set because they're in yellow right now. And I also had to set a collision object right here as well, just using the default parameters. So this, uh, if I just step through here, this keyframe starts back here at frame 1, and then up here at frame 160, it moves it to there like that. So then when I actually run the simulation, uh-oh, what happens? I must have accidentally goofed that up. So no, what did I do? I can't believe I messed. Select mesh, select inverse. Select inverse, right. How did I do that? 1.0, 1.0, and assign. Maybe I didn't hit that assign button. I swear I did. All right, let's run it again. Okay. Oh yeah, I know what I did. It was when I went in the physics button. I turned it off for a second to show you. And then I had forgot to reselect it again as the vertex group. Okay. So now when I run the simulation, it hits it and runs on through. Ah, cloth effects are pretty cool. I kind of dig them in a big way. All right, let's see. Yeah, they do really nice. Blender's really nice. Computers are really fast. Things are cool in the computer graphics world these days. All right, so but now instead of just having this one sphere go through there, maybe I want to make multiple instances of that sphere to hit it at the same time. So I'm going to grab this object, I'm going to make a copy of it. So and I'll move it over on the x-axis like this. All right. Instead of when I run the simulation, I'm hoping that, well, in fact, I'll even double check this. I'll press U and make it its own separate object. Well, I'm hoping that they'll both run separately across like this. I press all day, but nope, it jumps back to here because it has the keyframe set for the location. And we can verify that by bringing up th this menu and you notice up here at the location all these are in yellow like this. So it says it's got a keyframe set for X, Y, and Z. But in reality I only really care about the keyframe for Y in this case because I want the X value just to be in a different starting location like that. Of course I could just make a new object each and every time and go in and set keyframes each and every time for that, but that's kind of... Uh, I'm looking for a more creative way to be able to do that. But then we'll move it down a little. Well, I'll just leave it there for now. So one thing we can do is we'll get another window here. I'm going to do graph editor and we'll see what we have. We'll look at it full screen for the moment. You see what we have is there's the Y keyframe that was set all the way out to frame 160 right there. All right? But X and Z if we if we press X, there's X, X is flat lined, it hasn't moved, and Z, Z is the same way, Z is not moved as well. So there's nothing really going on with those. However, let's if I take the so some set on this one, if I just go grab say this point along the cuz I've got I'm looking at the X curve right now and I press G in here first frame. Okay, so I go grab this guy again. I'll move it down here. No, I'll grab the, this should be one down here. There it is down there. So there it is. There's the start location that I was looking for. So I basically move the x-axis up like this and move this one here however I want it. And then when I run the simulation, then it's basically using the same y value in here, but it has different x-axis starting positions and even ending positions for that matter. Right. So it's a quick way so you basically you can copy it allows you to copy the existing keyframe 
from this object of whatever of each one of those but then you can just adjust the others and uh, it's kind of powerful too because the graphing editor is really is really powerful I must say and then you get cooler effects like that in fact, we could even try it with another one but I'll let you experiment with that alright well that's it just wanted to point that out and I hope that helps you with your animations and I'll see you in the next lesson